This video is going to be about choosing a right SSD for your cache on your Synology or QNAP NAS, but uh, more particularly in, on Synology. Um, if, you, if you probably have noticed, those cache slots underneath your NAS or inside the NAS. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, which is about SSD cache, what is cache? Um, can I have it? Do I need it? how much of the cache I need, which one would fit and how to set it all up, then look up the video. I might put it in the description so you can actually first understand, do you actually need the cache and how much of cache do you actually need? When you can answer those two questions, then you can uh, actually watch this video and understand which um, brand and which type of uh, model number of the SSD cache would be most suitable for your uh, NAS. So let's dig in and uh, let's talk first about compatibility because what you need to do first is make sure that this SSD will uh, actually fit in your NAS. So there are two types of um, M2s. So what you need to do is uh, look for M2 because it might be confusing seeing other types of SSDs which are M SATA which you use to uh, put in your laptop to add more um, uh, the SSD uh, storage space and then um, the most confusing uh, bit is uh, about M.2 SATA and M.2 NVMe because these two are very different um, type of SSDs. Some NAS models will support both but there is very significant difference between these two SSDs. SATA SSD that means it works at uh, 6 gigabits per second so you would expect somewhere around 500-550 megabytes a second speed and uh, NVMe that's already PCIe it's like a, a SSD sort of type which can actually directly communicate to your uh, CPU the mother, via the motherboard you got it on the lanes how it's communicated the motherboard supported and you can expect uh, speeds on NVMe SSDs around uh, anywhere, starting with 1000 megabytes a second and ending up with 7000 and growing because they are creating uh, faster PCIs and, 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 and uh, adding more lanes to these PCIs. And they're actually improving SSD uh, chips as well, which uh, make it more efficient and faster overall. So you will need to first, yeah understand which size of M2 do you need and do you need SATA or NVMe so in the most of the models you will need 2280 and what does it mean 22 and 80 means that the size of M2 so what's the width so it's 22 millimeters wide which most of the, all of the SSDs will be and 80 or 110 means how long the stick is so the most popular is going to be 80 millimeters, 8 centimeters. And uh, some units will support uh, 11 centimeter long sticks. So now you know what 2280 or 22110 and NVMe and SATA means. So then the first, uh, first what you need to check is um, if you have a NAS already or if you know which NAS you're going to buy. So you need to check which size of uh, this SSD M.2 will fit in there. So if you're having a, a rack mount version like R1619 XS, that will support both NVMe and SATA SSD in size of eight centimeters in length. If you have PCIe cards, these cards will support um, both uh, standards, eight centimeter and 11 centimeter lengths. But with cards, you need to be more careful because uh, it depends on every model. So, so you need to go to compatibility page and actually check which card will support which SSD on which NAS because sometimes card can support both types of SSDs but NAS do not support particular card or particular SSD on this card installed in that particular NAS. So be careful with cards. It's quite tricky. And um, the, the most popular standard will be NVMe SSD which is to, uh, 2280 which is 8 centimeters long so you will see these M2s on models like DS918 
10, 19, 15, 29, 27, 24, 18, 21. <laughs> this, all of these plus series and even 16, 21 excess plus series models, where is actually NVMe cache slot available on, on the board, on the motherboard itself. So now you know that um, what sort of size and what sort of speed um, standard SSD you would need. So then you can move on on the subject about speed so what sort of speed ssd do i need because there are as i said there that you can find ssds anywhere ranging between 1000 and 7000 megabytes second but not all uh, nasdaqs will support actually that sort of speed so the highest speed so far you can get is on the 1621 xs which comes with um, xeon cell, uh, cpu and uh, this SSD has allocated PCI 3.0 four lanes, which means that the maximum uh, it can take from this SSD, if you would install this SSD, it's 4,000 megabytes uh, a second. So even if you install some really high performance 7,000 megabytes a second uh, of speed SSD, you will only max out at somewhere around 4,000 megabytes a second. That's on 1621. If you go for 1821 plus or 1621 plus, that's PCIe 3.0, only two lanes. So there's already half of the speed, just 2000 megabytes a second. And if you go for standard flagship models like 720, 420, 918, 1019, those are only PCIe 2.0, one lane, single lane, which is 500 megabytes a second. So what do you want, because what do you want, you don't want to do is um, sometimes, not always, uh, get so fast SSD and never take a advantage of this SSD speed. Because if you install 7,000 megabytes a second SSD into a 920 or 720, which only supports speed up to 500 megabytes a second, you might think like, what's, what's the point? But um, there is sometimes a point to actually going for faster SSDs. But um, if you need only something like a simple caching for files, if you've got many users accessing you and you want these files to be cached, then uh, 500 megabytes a second is going to be probably more than enough because you probably are connected with uh, my uh, one gigabit network anyway, which is around 100 megabytes a second or 200 if you're on 2.5 gig or if you've got link aggregation, but somewhere definitely underneath 500 megabytes a second uh, mark you would be having with these plus series models. So most of the situations, there is no reason really going for really fast SSDs. Sometimes you just need to get any sort of SSD, M2 SSD, which is um, around 500 to 1000 megabytes a second and, and you're good to go. But sometimes you might need something more. You might need more performance. So if you're running a web server or database server or real virtual machines, all of these things actually require something more than just single simple speed. You need something like IOPS. That means how quickly you can get a response from this SSD. So that's very, very useful, very, very important because when you are running virtual machine or database, the requests where you're going to be sending is going to be kilobytes, maybe megabyte at the most at the time. So what you actually need, you need a really quick answer response. So when you send the command to SSD to get some data back, you want to get response as quickly as possible. And this is what IOPS will be doing. So uh, here's a table uh, around about uh, around 500 gigabyte um, size of SSDs. So the same logic will apply for other capacities as well, like uh, 250 gigabyte, one terabyte or two terabyte. But we're going to focus more only on five gigabyte because there will be a trend. So if you want the best performance, then you look at IOPS and then there is read or write uh, IOPS speed. So if you about the re uh, reading, so you can have a look that the fastest would be WD Black SN850 or Samsung 980 Pro. These are the ones which are running on PCIe 4.0 already, but uh, they are made 
with their own controller chips on it and uh, all NAND technology, which is allowing really quickly to get this data back. So if you need uh, a SSD for caching your virtual machines, databases and everything like that, then, then you should actually be considering something really fast like Samsung Pro or, or WD Black. Synology SSDs as well are semi good, but not, not as good as some of these Samsung and WD. And then you might ask about reliability, okay, which, which SSDs might be the most reliable, because you will be most likely setting these two SSDs in the RAID 1 if you've got two slots. But if you, if you install um, more SSDs, like using 3.5 inch base for small, for example, if you didn't go for any option, you might have RAID 5, for example, but most common option will be RAID 1 on two NVMEs and you want them never to fail. So you want really high reliability. So the things to look at would be terabytes written or meantime before our failures, these two things. So expectancy of our drives, which, which could actually write data without any having any failures, the highest ones you will find on Seagate Iron Law 510 or again you could uh, you could actually consider Pro Series which is not that high actually uh, they're both written uh, but Synology also SNV 3400 uh, NVMe that, that's something as well to consider uh, and uh, meantime between failure the best is actually some cheaper one which is Transcend NVMe PCIe or Seagate Iron Law 510 again, or Kingston 2000. These two options. So this is something to consider when you consider reliability, then these two things to have a look at. And obviously warranty as well, but most of the NVMEs will come with five years warranty. So it's going to be very difficult to see a difference between uh, brands and, and models just by looking at our warranties links. And then the other thing is, Longevity, longevity, how long these SSDs actually gonna last? So again, you, you might look at uh, terabytes written. How, how, what's the expect, expected terabytes to be written on this SSD? So the bigger the number, that means that this SSD is made to last longer, to, to have more data written to these SSDs. So again, so Seagate Iron 510 would be uh, something to consider or Synology SSD. Um, and the other thing is endurance. Not all SSD brands actually are making this public, but this is really, really important. If you can figure this out, then endurance number will mean that, like how actually truly reliable this, this uh, SSD is. The higher the number, the better. So in this case, Seagate Iron Wolf 510 would be the best SSD for reliability, for long-lasting sort of uh, solution. And the uh, other option would be Synology SSD again, if you need something for really long-term use and for heavy use, uh, then uh, this is something to consider. This You probably might look something like this for Rackman solutions, where it's like 100 plus users or uh, loads of virtual machines, really heavy use situation. And the last thing to have a look at is um, simply a price. So if you have decided that, okay, I'm not going to be using any virtual machines, I'm not going to be doing databases or web servers or anything complicated like that. So I just need simple caching for file storage. So all I, I care about is then price really. So the cheapest really is going to be uh, Cyoxia uh, or WD Blue or Crucial Drives uh, SSDs. But um, as you can see, there is a correlation between the performance and reliability and the price. So uh, better the SSD, uh, more you're going to be expected to pay for these. So I hope this was um, helping you to understand what SSD exactly would uh, fit in your NAS and which SSD is actually the best choice in your situation, in your solution. If you have any questions, you can go to NASCOM Pairs. There's on the right hand side of the form. You can fill and put your question in there or send email to infonascompares.com and we might answer your email 
uh, on the video and upload it on YouTube so we can actually help the world. Isn't that great? I hope this was helpful and have a lovely day yourself.